We're constantly on the lookout for new destinations and what's next. When it came to Greenland, uh, I'll admit that it really wasn't even on my radar until recently. You know, when it comes to scouting a new destination that might not be new by angling standards, but is new for us at Yellow Dog, you know, it's always kind of exciting heading off to somewhere new, especially if it's a country or a region that you haven't been before. I won't say that I arrived with low expectations, but I just kind of arrived with very few expectations. I wasn't really sure what we were gonna find. And over the course of 10 days, I was just blown away. Scandinavia is different than other parts of Europe. It's certainly different than any other destination in the world. And you've got, you know, Denmark, you've got Sweden, Norway, those countries that are beautiful countries, amazing people, very well developed. And then you've got Greenland. Sissima is a cool little town and I think uh, anybody spending any time there is going to walk around and just go, oh wow, this is incredible. We're in Greenland. The trip began um, traveling some, from Sissima up to Camp North and it's exactly that. It's a camp. Um, it's on a beautiful river. It's at the end of an incredibly long fjord. You have to arrive at just the right time where the tide is high enough at the back of the fjord so they can get the boat in. And then you kind of walk your way into the main camp area. And it's, it's pretty simple. It's 12 geodesic domes that are built on these wooden platforms. You've got kind of a Quonset hut um, steel beamed tent where it's your dining room and kind of your social and hangout area. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the camp. There's a little shower box, there's an outhouse, uh, and that's your base of operations. It's a, a more remote, kind of off the grid, rugged location. If you're someone who likes to camp, it's perfect. And if you like to hike, um, then it's a, a destination to consider. But you gotta hike. I mean, all the fishing is, is upstream of the camp and there's different sections. Whether you're headed up to the upper, upper section above the lake by the big waterfall, um, which involves a boat ride about halfway up, um, or you're fishing the main river itself, or there's a tributary that comes in by the first lake that's full of fish. Um, so you really have a number of different options. You you have to be fit to to be able to get out to on Camp North to get to the even the first pool, which they refer to as uh, the kiddie pool, which is I don't know, 40 minute walk, and then from there you've got all kinds of fish stacked up and in different areas and massive fish just stacked, stacked, just crazy. You know, a big part of what I do when I'm out in the field, um, you know, yeah, you're visiting a location, you're scouting it, you're learning about it, you know, you're studying um, the fishery, you're asking a lot of questions, you're basically learning how to effectively and accurately sell a destination. Um, for me, however, the, the thing I've always probably enjoyed the most is the photography. Um, since you know I started Yellow Dog, it's always been a big part of what I do when I'm out on the water and in the field. And it's something I still really enjoy, uh, especially when you're in a place that is just so incredibly beautiful. It's a special kind of place. It's not for everybody, um, but I think for those that really love being, you know, close, close, close to nature and also putting the miles in and covering a lot of ground by, by walking, it's really neat. You know, the fishery is, is unique. It's all walk waiting. Um, and the more you're willing to walk and explore, the, the bigger the rewards, no doubt about it. So I hadn't done a lot of focused char fishing before coming to Greenland. I mean, I've caught them in other countries. Certainly you catch them in Alaska quite a bit when you're rainbow fishing. But to go out and specifically target sea run char 
Um, so little, you know, some different techniques up here, which was cool. Probably the most enjoyable is skating big foam surface flies. And again, there are places you can do this. In Alaska, sometimes in the U.S. West, um, you know, steelhead fishermen, Atlantic salmon fishermen, they know the thrill of a skated, you know, dry fly and that boil that comes up behind it. But it's a little different with these char. You're fishing big foam. It's typically orange, um, pink. They love the, the bright colors up here. Uh, you're skating it. You're just moving it across that surface. And, and uh, the more even keeled and nice the skate can be, uh, you just kind of, are in that zone and you're watching that fly and you're just you know trying to get that drift just right and all of a sudden there's just an explosion and the fish come out of nowhere like a missile and they hit this thing and uh, I kind of I, I can't imagine that if anybody really loves to fly fish you can't get excited about that I mean if that doesn't get you going if you're not making noise and hooting and hollering and laughing and just having a great time when when the skating action is on you probably just need to sell your stuff and find a different sport because uh, it's as good as it gets. You know, it's not always on. You know, we would go into certain runs, certain parts of the river, and we would, you know, skate. And nothing was really happening, so then you'd switch back to streamers, which is a lot of fun, too. You know, a lot of anglers like to swing flies. Again, it's a little bit like steelhead fishing, um, but you can, you can find some big fish subsurface on, on streamers. The thing that probably surprised me most about just coming up and focusing for a whole week on char was how much fun the E was, uh, but also how strong they are. Sometimes you fish, uh, you know, simple woolly bugger in the colors of, of pink and purple or even, you know, orange, like colors that you typically aren't fishing, you know, on a regular day-to-day -day fishing adventure when you think like, oh, I'm gonna use pink. Well, no, it's, that's the color you want, it's pink. When you move into a section of the river, you're constantly scanning the water, and, and these char are pretty easy to see. You can not only see where the fish are accumulating in big numbers, but you can also pick out certain fish. And if you wanna go you know, hunt for some really big ones, this is such a cool fishery because the water is clear. Those fish are typically laying in fairly shallow water. Um, they're moving through and around the system, so you know they're not parked in one spot for long. But when you do find them, you know you try a variety of different techniques. Maybe you skate it first, and you go to a streamer. And if they're still not moving to the streamer, maybe you're doing a little bit of you know kind of euro fishing or nymph fishing to them. And and a lot of times you can get them to to bite. Not always, but. Uh, you know, when, when you come tight on one of these big fish, it gets exciting in a hurry. A lot of times when you go to a lodge, there'll be a guide, you know, for every two anglers. Um, or every single angler, depending on where you go. Here, that's not really the case. Um, and they do it for a couple of reasons. One, it, it helps keep the cost down, which is great. And early on when they were starting for their European market, that was a big factor. But two, you really don't need a guide here. Um, the fishing is usually that consistent. And while it's, I, I don't wanna say it's easy, it's very um, easy to figure out. You can oftentimes see the fish. You know exactly where they are. You know where they're holding. And then the techniques are pretty straightforward. Whether you're skating a big dry or you're swinging a streamer, um, it's not super technical. Yeah, it rewards good angling. It rewards um, good anglers who have you know, a higher skill set, perhaps. They're probably gonna catch more fish. They're probably gonna catch bigger fish. But even if you're brand new to fly fishing, you're gonna come here and you're gonna do well because there are a lot of fish. But you know, the unguided thing, it's pretty nice. You, you feel a little bit more independent. Um, there is a camp manager and there's a, a camp assistant at each location, and they're there to help. They're there to, you know, help you know go through the flies, and and they'll maybe head out uh, with you for a couple days while you're there to show you some of the best pools and work with you on your technique. But you figure it out pretty quickly, and after that, you're kind of on your own, and and it's a lot of fun. <music> made the move south, went down to the Urfalik River and stayed at Urfalik Lodge. And this is 
the polar opposite of the Camp North experience. As cool as that was and as, as enjoyable and, and rugged as that was, you show up and when you pull into the little fjord uh, in the mouth of your Follock River, you look up and you see this lodge that you just cannot believe. And here you are out here again in just this you know, kind of extreme landscape, uh, crazy weather, um, obviously some huge winters that they're, uh, they roll into after the, the short fishing season. But to build this lodge with this level of comfort and these kind of amenities, uh, a place that after you're hiking all day and covering ground that you can work your way back to and you know that you're gonna have you know, incredible food and you're gonna have a, a hot tub and a sauna waiting for you, it's a pretty special place. Thomas is kind of one of the, he's, he's a partner in the whole, in the whole uh, Camp Erflick and Camp North. And he's been doing this for, for quite a while and, and did some you know, pioneering of, of the fisheries here. And, and Thomas is uh, very knowledgeable in the fishery and has clearly you know, has done really good research on, on this area and figured out that he can, he can get anglers here, whether they be European or, or uh, soon to be uh, more Americans, which is exciting to offer to to our market. I thought that, you know, when we were at Camp North, we were probably there because, you know, that's where they see so many big fish and the fishing is so good. And that when we moved on to Erfolic Lodge, I said, oh, the lodge is, you know, amazingly comfortable. You're gonna love it. And I think in the back of my mind, I thought, well, okay, maybe it's gonna be a step down on the fishing. You know, it's maybe not as big a fish or, or not quite as good, or maybe the numbers. Um, wasn't the case at all. It's it's different. There's no doubt. the The fishery at Camp North um, is is a lot of big fish. Um, a lot of very fresh fish. You get down to Erfolic, you still do a very similar amount of of hiking and covering a similar distance each day when you set out on foot from the lodge. Um, but what you find in the Erfolic River were fish that were just so incredibly beautiful, so brightly colored. Um, I've never seen char like it anywhere on the planet. Uh, and I think that's what this river is probably known for, is, is are those big, beautiful, colored up fish. The difference between fishing-wise between Erfelik and Camp North is on, on Camp North, the fish grow a little bigger, probably because the river is, is uh, sits at the bottom of a really huge fjord and I think these fish don't leave the fjord. That fjord is full of, of, of fish so they probably feed on fish makes them grow faster. Here at Erfelik and, and down south on the Pirisat we're closer to open ocean. I think these fish will will go out and eat more shrimp maybe um, and you can also see they, they color up more here maybe because of, of you know the food source. Uh, even when you, we eat them, we can see the meat is even more red here, right? So, so there are some differences. So some people want to go to Camp North because they want to catch the biggest possible char. Others want to go here to, to Erfalik, uh, maybe a little later in the season to catch these super red ones. Thomas is super fishy. I mean, the guy, you know, he, he's got the, you know, we're, we talked about foam flies and, and uh, foam flies are, you know, there's a technique and he clearly knows it. <laughs> He has done it enough to really know, okay, this is the, the technique of the stripping, like do this, you know, with the rod pushing forward and and I think he's he's uh He's got a relationship with his char.
Yeah, so as far as where Greenland fits in the overall lineup of what we have, you know, what kind of trip is this? Who is this best suited for? Um, it's an adventure. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I would put this very much in kind of our, our more hardcore categories. You know, you're going to be super comfortable, and especially if you're staying at the lodge, it's it's incredibly nice. But the, the rigors of, of the fishing and just kind of the demands of, of getting to and from these productive areas each day, you got to put some legwork in. You got to do some hiking. Um, similar uh, demanding trips would be something like the, the jungle fishing in Bolivia, for example, um, or some of the uh, kind of backcountry U.S. West stuff. Certainly New Zealand is a good comparison because in New Zealand, you know, the more you walk, the more you hike, the, the better the fishing uh, is going to be. It's very similar here, kind of a little bit like Iceland as well. You're covering some ground, but uh, yeah, it's adventurous. It's not for everybody, but for people that, that really appreciate beautiful places, big fish and being able to do it all by, you know, walking and waiting and kind of getting out there on your own. This place is, is very unique.